Let's take a look at some of the benefits of having this new consumer unit fitted. And if we start on the far right hand side, and that's a Type 2 SPD or Surge Arrester. So we've got a Surge device installed there in order that we can offer some protection for items that are in circuit. So say plugged in. So you've got your TV, electronic components in there. You've got your mobile phone. You've got your tablet. You've got your games console, PC. You've got the electronic equipment within the oven, a boiler. All of those are sensitive to over voltages. So in other words, rising well above 230 volts within the installation. And the SPD's job there is to protect from those over voltages. So we can have a transient over voltage caused by atmospheric conditions not onto the property. So it could be a, a storm, a lightning or an electromagnetic storm somewhere, say in your town or village, that ends up being dropped into the system. By the time it gets to you, it's an over voltage voltage and that can cause you a problem and that's probably not quite as common as the other one being by switching loads. So we've talked about before when we have a magnetic ballast within a fluorescent light fitting that we drop a back EMF across the tube and we've used that in other videos and in classroom lessons in order to get it to strike. Well imagine you were near some industrial works so maybe near a factory unit with lots of motors which are inductive loads and they were turned off Okay, obviously that could drop that effectively voltage back into the system at higher voltage than the 230 nominal voltage could appear into your installation. And that surge of voltage could cause damage to your electronic components. Or it could be the big transformer. So we know a transformer is a big coil and that's at the end of your street, it's 11 kV. And that was turned off, okay, power cut in other words, effectively the same thing happens again. We have that back EMF or that dropping of voltage into the system and becomes a spike that could end up at your property and damage those electronic equipments plugged in. Pretty much most circuitry now has some sort of electronic component in that could be damaged by that. So by installing a type two surge protection device, you offer a level of protection against that. Definitely not a lightning strike on the building. So that's there on the right hand side. And you see the two little windows in it are green. They will change to red when that surge arrester requires replacing. So next to the SPD is the main switch or linked main switch or double pole switch, all names used in multi-choice questions and written papers. So that's there for means of isolation. So by operating that switch, it's currently in the on position. And we look at the windows there, they are red, red for danger. Okay, if you look at the far left hand side of the devices, there is a green window, they're in the off position. And when I disconnect that, or in other words, operate that double pole switch, it disconnects both the line conductor and the neutral conductor, because we know when we talk about them together, they are live conductors. So when I operate the main switch inside of the consumer unit there, I actually isolate all the circuits to the left-hand side. In other words, I turn off the power within that installation by operating that linked main switch or double pole switch. So next to the main switch, we have an MCB, a miniature circuit breaker, offering short circuit and overload protection. And it's a B type 32 amps. Remember, they come as Bs, Cs and Ds. And this is a B32, so it's 32 amps. And that MCB is feeding the SPD on the far side. So that's the part of the circuit that just goes that short distance to that SPD. And I've got videos on the channel showing you how to connect up an SPD as well. Next to that, we start a row now of RCBOs, residual current circuit breakers. So these are both an MCB and an RCD combined into one device. So if we look at that first floor lighting circuit, it's a B6, so the MCB element of it is a B type and it's six amps, but it's also an RCD rated at 30 milliamps. So that RCD element will offer additional protection. And if we look next to that, it shows us what type the RCD is. And we know that RCDs come in four different types. This is a type A and pretty much now the minimum requirement to be installed. So as you look at the RCDs that we have in the workshop, um, or around the installations that you're installing as an apprentice, you may be seeing that older symbol, which is just the simple AC waveform. 
and that AC RCD now is pretty much impossible to fit into an installation because if you've got any type of electronic components, which we said we had when we fitted our surge arrestor, is you can't use that type of RCD. So A type is really now the minimum. And that's quite important because as we look at the consumer units in the workshop, many of ours have that AC waveform on them. And we've got to say to ourselves, if I was installing an RCD, whether it be an RCBO or an RCCB in an installation, I should be looking at an A type one as a minimum. And that's the symbol I should be seeing on the item that I bought from the wholesaler and therefore then installed. The other two types are F and B, and we will go through those in more detail in other videos. So A type being the minimum. So if that was to trip, it would only disconnect the first floor lighting circuit and leave every other circuit in the consumer unit energized. We've now got the advantage of this one RCD under earth fault conditions trips and only disconnects that circuit. Next to it, you've got another B6 for the ground floor lights, and then you've got a B32 for the cooker, a B32 for a sockets, which is likely to be a ring final circuit. And then the end one is a B16 for a water heater. And then we've got the ability to extend the wiring system. Now, it doesn't mean put an extension on the building because we've left some spare ways. So you've got a spare way there of a 32 amp type B RCBO, again, A type 30 milliamps and a couple of breakers spare, and a couple of blank ways as well. So what we've done here is, unlike the original board that was completely full, all six circuits were taken up, the board has been changed and allowed for the electrical system to be extended by leaving five spare ways. Now, kindly, the you know, electrician being Marcus has left an RCBO and two breakers in there. So that's quite handy if you come back to extend the circuits, you might find that a circuit's already there that you can use. And obviously there's additional blanks in as well. So an exam question is often, why would you want more ways within a board than you're using? We're only using six of the actual ways in here. Why would you want more spare ways? Well, that's so you can have future extensions to the wiring system. Another advantage of using individual RCBOs for each circuit is the amount of natural earth leakage current you're allowed to have on a circuit protected by an RCD. So if we have an RCCB in an older style consumer unit, say protecting five, six circuits, the total amount of earth leakage current from all five or six circuits can be no greater than 30% of the rated value of the RCCB. So if that RCCB is rated at 30 milliamps because it's offering additional protection, the maximum natural earth leakage current from all of those circuits it protects is just nine milliamps. That nine milliamps is not a lot when you've got six circuits or five circuits that could potentially leak a little bit of natural earth leakage back. So that can cause you an issue. As soon as you go over to, as we have done in this board, individual RCBOs, because of the RCDs for each circuit, each of them, so we take the first floor lighting, can have a 30% natural earth leakage current. So what's 30% of 30? So 10% of 30 is obviously three, and therefore 30 is nine, and that gives you your nine milliamps. But that means that one lighting circuit can have a natural earth leakage current of nine milliamps, and then next to it, the ground floor lights could have a natural earth leakage current of nine milliamps, and so on as we do the cooker, the sockets, and the water heater. So that's another thing that makes it an advantage having individual RCBOs over the old system where we had those RCCBs protecting several circuits at once. Also, when the RCCB trips, it trips off four, five, six circuits if it's half the board as well. So we can see how this consumer unit is a strong contender for what we should be fitting when we're out there in the real world. 